It is the burden of some to be forgotten. The march of history is both long and merciless, making colossi of those who do not deserve it and footnotes of others equally spurned. Cast into the pits of the past, there exist in the hazy memory of our race heroes whose sacrifice and actions, despite in some cases being of supreme consequence, are lost to the collective historical conscience. Often this is due to the historical fascination with one aspect or other of the event they were part in, yet not remembered for. Such is, as far as one can discern, the case with the subjects of this chronicle. Not often is it that one can be party to events of absolutely seismic importance, especially those around which the fulcrum of human history revolves. Yet, Despite this, there is room for great heroism and mighty deeds. You simply have to throw yourself at the mercy of history and hope that some dusty historator in some far-off time possesses the eye for your tale. Know then that this is a record of the god engines of the Prosperine, the Iron Vigil, the Legios Estobiax. Exact details pertaining to the founding of the Legios Estobiax are functionally lost to us, save from what we can infer from the records of the lost forge fane of Chow Arcad. The tale of this particular planet, which shall be detailed in full in a later record, points to an origin in the distant Dark Age of Technology, although even the exact millennium of the forge's founding is debated amongst both historitors and the adepts of the Adeptus Mechanicus. As was common amongst expeditions from Red Mars at the time, the expedition arc was accompanied by Titan-class war engines, and, given the age of those Zestobiax engines extant at the reunification of Chao Arcad and the Imperium, it can be surmised that the Legio was formally founded after initial colonization occurred. The only Titan to survive since the Legio's inception is the warlord class Munus Aeternum, which lays at rest under the personal fane of Chao Arcad's supreme domini. While its origins are lost, the Legio's early history remains scrupulously documented, owing to a tradition of record-keeping founded by the moderati of the Legio. From its inception, Zestobiax was a purely defensive force. Chao Arcad lies in an isolated and desolate region of wild space far from Terra, and, as the Age of Strife cut human worlds off from each other, the Forge was pitted against all the horrors its stellar volume could throw at it. By the nature of the main Forge's surface, material could not be exposed to its atmosphere for long before undergoing incredibly debilitating corrosion, meaning the Legio's primary garrison was based on one of the planet's many moons, Chao Arcad III, with more engines sub-garrisoned on the various worlds in system that served as the Forge's resource collection colonies. At first foreseen to be a temporary solution in trying times where military assets were few, this situation became permanent as the horrific warp tempests plaguing the galaxy showed no signs of abating. The Iron Vigil, as the Legio became colloquially known, would name those individual subdivisions as unique vigils in their own right, with battle records matching the honors won therein as belonging to the vigil in question rather than the Legio as a whole. For example, the 14th Battle of Istiam, a forge colony of the main planet, is accorded as a high honor for the Istiam Vigil, or a force totaling no more than two maniples held off the predations of a half-dozen Eldari nomadic fleets in a massively destructive siege. Customarily, the Legio is under the rule of the Grand Marshal, although, functionally, this role holds little actual power beyond the ceremonial, as there is little but ceremonial duties for the Marshal to actually do. The nature of the individual vigils mean that they could operate effectively independently 
for centuries at a time, with little contact between what counted as the main body of the legio. This led to the development of idiosyncrasies and customs unique to each vigil, while on a practical level also invested a high degree of authority into the commanding role of Princeps Warden of each vigil. Whereas in other military forces this could lead to internal strife and discord, with personalities within such a powerful force as the Titan Legio seemingly inevitably coming into conflict, the isolated nature of the Shao Arcade system forced the vigils, not that much forcing was necessary, into a brotherhood whose cooperation was necessary for their survival against those that assaulted their homeworld from without. While some disagreements would be simply inevitable during gatherings of Princeps Wardens, the nature of the mission of the Iron Vigil as a whole made such gatherings rare during the Age of Strife. Even after rediscovery, the tradition of individual initiative within the Legio Zestobiax saw them fighting in the Great Crusade in far smaller maniple subdivisions than any Legio, save perhaps the Legio Fiorians. While the main body of the Legio remained in Chao Arcad near space to protect the still isolated forge world. This was further impacted by Chao Arcad's lack of shipbuilding, limiting the Legio's transportation capacity to no more than a dozen engines at any one time. Thus the Vigils maintained their duties, much in the same way they had for millennia, barely changed at all by reunification with greater humanity. That is, except for the establishment of the Prospero Vigil. The relationship with Prospero and the 15th Legion Thousand Sons was the closest Chao Arcad had with any other planet or indeed human organization in general. Their long isolation had made them wary of outsiders, even those of the Mechanicum itself, and their physical isolation in wild space led them being marked, tacitly, as a backwater in the mines of Red Mars. That being said, their liberation at the hands of the Thousand Suns, as well as the cultural affinity for knowledge, study, experimentation, and research they shared with the Legion, led to the founding of a sub-forge on the Legion's homeworld of Prospero, in order that the new Arcadian Mechanicum could continue to supply their liberators with arms and ammunition, and avail themselves of the studies made possible by the libraries of Tizca. Befitting a Legion homeworld, and in thanks for the resources the 15th Legion made available to them, the Legio Zestobiax stationed twelve of their newest forged engines in this subforge, with many of the latter years of the 30th millennium spent both consecrating this new vigil and integrating it with the defenses of both the Legion itself and the Imperial Army's Prosperine Spire Guard. By the time of the burning of Prospero, the Divisio Militaris recorded the Legio Zestobiax as a tertius grade Titan Legion, in possession of less than 100 engines, and none of these above Warlord class. The additional isolation in the Chao Arcad volume, and the essential lack of presence in the Crusade, further enhanced their status as a footnote amongst the Collegia Titanica, but one that held to its duties with an admirably resolute dedication. Their almost exclusively defensive role led the Legio to shun Warhound Titans, in favor of constituting the vast majority of its strength from Warlord and Reaver classes seeing smaller scout titans as of little worth tactically and a waste of the limited resources they had, which were better spent on the creation of heavier marks. The Legio, almost uniquely, would be served by their parents' forges' acceptance of oft-prescribed technologies, including Psychana, shunned by the wider Mechanicum. Chao Arcad's physical and metaphorical isolation from the Mechanicum and their close association with the Thousand Suns, led to the Forge's experimentation on the engines themselves, both before and after rediscovery, such that by the outbreak of the heresy, the titans of the Legio Zestobiax were outfitted with psychoreactive cores and mind impulse units designed to channel both the machine spirit of the engine itself and the embedded memories of its former crews, so that the princeps and moderati of the living 
could learn and utilize the battle experience of the dead. This meant that, despite their small numbers, the engines of Zestobiax would often perform with a level of tactical skill and coordination far above legios of their equivalent experience, achieving strategic results that bellied their status as a tertiary-grade legio. There is no better example of this than the chapter of their history marked as either their blackest or most noble, depending on one's point of view. The Prospero Vigil found itself right in the middle of the burning of that planet, as the censure host of the Sixth Legion Space Wolves, the Legio Custodes, and the Silent Sisterhood fell upon the Thousand Sons to bring them to account for the crimes of their Primarch, Magnus the Red. While a full account of this momentous event is currently being compiled, the role the Legio Zestobiax were to play was small, yet incredibly significant in its own way. The Chow Arcade Subforge, deemed traitorous by association with the 15th Legion, came under attack during the battle by the Titans of the Legio Mortis, supported by Knights of House Malinax. As any student of history well knows, both Mortis and Malinax were later to declare for the war master Horus Lupercal. But at this point in history, both wore the false masks of loyalty to the Emperor and the Imperium. The Mortis execution maniples were led by senior princeps Maldris Drain, and composed of veterans of Horus's own 63rd expeditionary fleet. Additionally, the Legio itself was one of the original three Titan legions founded upon Mars, with a victory tally longer than perhaps any other legio in the Imperium. Despite this, and despite expecting, with perhaps decent merit, an easy victory, the Death's Heads were virtually annihilated by the numerically and experientially inferior Zestobiax Vigil. Princeps Drain had vastly underestimated their operational capabilities to his own end, with his Warlord Titan being decapitated by sustained pinpoint fire from Zestobiax Reaver Sleepless Watcher. The defeat of the Legio Mortis and House Malinax was only spared from being a total and utter rout by the commander of the Legio Custodes, Constantine Valdor, who, upon seeing the devastation wrought upon his own allied titans, unleashed the terrifying might of the Emperor's own Titan Legion, the Ordo Sinister. These Psy Titans made short work of the Prospero Vigil, annihilating Zestobiax from the surface of the world and, in many ways, the pages of history. Speculation on what carried the day, albeit briefly, for the Legio Zestobiax is the subject of some debate amongst those few of us concerned with their existence. Certainly, their Black Iron Psychana technology granted them some measure of advantage, but, as is ever the case, simply having tactical knowledge is useless. One must have both the capability and the will to wield it. One is inclined however much it may shock one's superiors, to honor the fallen of this legio. They fought against the wretched serpents of the war master's ilk, cloaked in deception though they were, and turned not their guns upon the true servants of the emperor of mankind. That being said, their existence and resistance still earned them a harsh rebuke, as did both their association with their parent forge and their use of heretechnical technology. The rebuke, however, did not fall, as the fires of the Horus heresy rapidly engulfed the galaxy, and Mars's attentions were elsewhere occupied. The majority of the Legio Zestobiax, numbering at that point upwards of fifty engines, did as their masters did for the remainder of the heresy, maintaining their isolation and aiding no side traitor or loyalist, officially. With Chow Arcad humbled during the great scouring in the heresy's aftermath, the Legio Zestobiax remains officially pardoned, yet unwilling to fight abroad across the galaxy. The Iron Vigil instead maintains its watch over wild space and all those who would threaten its forge. 
a backwater footnote in history of the Titan Legions, but nevertheless an almost peerlessly honorable one. Until next time, Ave Imperator, Gloria in Excelsis Terra. This video and this channel are made possible through the incredibly kind contributions of my Patreon subscribers. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com forward slash Oculus Imperia. And if you're looking to keep in touch with the channel, get regular updates, you can follow me on Twitter at ButtStuffKaiju, or check us out on Discord. A link will be in the description and on the channel page.